What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm really excited for today's video, so I hope you guys are as well, because we're down in the grow room and we're gonna be talking about how to properly prune your basil. How to properly prune your basil. Almost sounds like a tongue twister there. Um, so, <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about how to properly prune your basil today, because it's been something that a lot of you have, have asked, and it seems like a pretty common reoccurring topic that you all have asked in the comment section of our Instagram uh, posts, our Facebook posts, and even uh, in shots where they weren't the topic of the video, but they were like in the background. We were talking about how to, uh, how to hand pollinate your zucchini. And it seemed like five or 10 questions were just all about the basil in the background. So uh, I figured I would at least answer those questions because it seems like a lot of you want me to do a video about basil. So the first thing that a lot of you have voiced concern over is, Luke, my plants have gotten really lanky. They've kind of gotten just kind of mangy and are falling all over the place. They're not bushy and healthy like yours are. Well, let me tell you, for the past three weeks, I have not pruned these basil plants specifically so that I could do a pruning guide. And so I'm glad you guys asked about the mangy plants because basil will inherently get mangy. It will inherently get really top heavy. And so um, you kind of read my mind on that one. That was actually already in the works and that's why I hadn't been pruning these, but uh, they do get mangy. And so pruning them uh, is gonna fix that. I'm gonna show you how to properly prune them. The next thing is, Luke, my plants have stopped growing entirely. What can I do and, or what am I doing wrong or should I just pull them out? The answer is no, no, do not pull your plants out. Do not pull your plants out. There is something that you can do and it's called pruning. So pruning is not only gonna fix how mangy and top heavy they are, but it's also gonna fix their growth problem. You see, basil is a woody stemmed herb and woody stemmed herbs have the ability to produce side growth. Basically like if you top a tomato plant, that tomato plant won't just stop growing, it's gonna produce more side shoots. Basil is very much the same, uh, basil and peppers are very much the same way. And so when you prune the tops, the top primary growth, it doesn't just say, all right, well, I guess I'm done growing. It's then going to reroute that energy and push out more growth in other places. And so that really allows you to increase the growth. So we're gonna talk about how to, um, how to uh, properly top your plants so that they actually encourages more growth. And that will also do another thing. That will also increase the center of gravity. It will actually make your plants bushier and more stable. So it goes back to the first concern. So the kind of two are looped together. And then we're also gonna talk about uh, some pest issues and some powdery mildew issues. So we're gonna talk about um, you know, what might be eating your basil. We've had quite a few different people that have shown their basil plants getting munched on. And so uh, I have some thoughts and theories on that and how to prevent it. And then I also have some people that have been posting about diseases like powdery mildew. So we're gonna talk about how to prevent powdery mildew on your basil as well, because that one, um, again, very easy fixes on all of those. So let's talk about uh, the first one, which is the center of gravity issue, because I think that's that's probably one of the most popular ones. You know, basil, they just get so tall if you don't maintain them. And then all it takes is one strong wind and they're on the ground. So even these ones here, because they're in net cups, they don't have a whole lot of support. They're, uh, they really have no center of gravity. They're just falling all over the place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on here and I'm gonna show you just how to prune these. So let's go. All right, so as you can see, this basil plant is looking a little worse for wear. I mean, it looks great, don't get me wrong. I mean, this stuff is absolutely incredibly healthy, but it is just falling all over the place. I mean, there is just no point to even standing this thing up. It just falls over one second later. And so what you'll notice with these plants is that they produce these, well, <laughs> they produce these really long side stems that unfortunately just get, they get really, uh, they get really easily snapped. One strong wind and breaks off almost the whole plant. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna really prune these back. This is something that you really should be doing on you know, a weekly basis. As basil gets this big, you can be pruning your basil on a weekly basis. And what that's going to do is it's going to encourage the plant to actually be much lower to the ground. It's gonna take off all this really heavy growth. I mean, this is a lot of woody growth that is, I mean, that's a substantial amount of weight on that plant. Then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna come in and we're gonna prune this one. And we're gonna come in here, we're gonna prune this one. And a lot of people are afraid to do this. But look at how stable this plant is now. I mean, this plant is really, really stable. And all I have to do to really stabilize this because it's in a, it's in a hydroponic system is just take some, some, uh, little, clay ball, some little clay balls and uh, put them around the base. 
and that's really going to fix most of that issue. But if this was in ground, I mean, this would be even more stable. And basil is just such an easy plant to prune. I mean, you don't have to worry about really pruning off too much. I think that's what's so nice about pruning basil is that a lot of people, you know, a lot of people overthink it. A lot of people worry about pruning off too much and hurting the plant. But as you can see, I mean, I'm coming here, I'm lopping off like two thirds of this plant and I can guarantee you that in a week, you won't even be able to tell that this plant was pruned. It's gonna be right back to where it was. And so I'm just coming in here and I'm just taking all of that growth back because look at how stable these plants are now. The next thing you have to do is you have to prune the flowers. This solves one of the biggest problems that a lot of people have is their basil stops growing entirely. If you take your basil and you simply cut back some of the flowers, you don't have to lop the entire plant back, but sometimes during hot weather, your basil will start to go to flower. As you'll see, the leaves get smaller and they start forming what's, uh, what's known as, uh, as flower leaflets. These leaflets are actually uh, the beginnings of the flowers. And that's why people say, well, my, my, my leaves are just getting smaller, but I don't see any flowers. Shortly after, after they start producing all these leaflets, that's when the flowers will form. And so they're not formed yet. Uh, the flowers are not formed yet, but they're gonna form very, very soon with all these leaflets. And so as the leaves get smaller and smaller and smaller, you want to prune them off. You'll notice here, again, the leaves start out larger, you get smaller, 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 and that's where those, those leaflets form. So pruning those off is gonna do you a huge service of just um, reducing the flowering because when a plant flowers, it actually starts prioritizing the flowers over production because the flowers then lead to seeds and the seeds are future generations. This plant has no interest in producing foliage all year long. Its end goal is to produce seeds. Every plant's job is to produce seeds so it can reproduce. And so what we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to regularly prune these plants back. Now, obviously I'm gonna lop them off quite dramatically. I'm gonna take them back, like I said, about two thirds. Uh, but if you don't have two thirds of the plant to chop off, but it's just starting to flower, cut it back still, get those flowers gone so that it can continue to flower for you. So I'm just coming in here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hacking all of these back and, um, and it's really going to do an immense amount of help for my overall plant health. And you can see, I mean, these plants are so small now from where they were, and that's because uh, they were just so overgrown. But again, here, here's another example. This one right here, see how, see the leaves? Take you real close. See how the leaves start out, they go smaller, 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 smaller. That's the plant going to seed. And so it's really that simple to kind of decrease the, the wobbliness, the lankiness, to increase the center of gravity, to increase the overall production of your plant, and to encourage future growth. It's very, very simple. And I really hope that you guys just kind of see from this video just how simple it is. Um, you know, I know a lot of people tend to overcomplicate things, but this is certainly not one you should be overcomplicating. Very, very simple. As a side note, too, I have been getting a ton of basil. And we're talking, I probably have, I would say, two or three pounds of basil at minimum from all my harvesting. So that's really exciting. I'm definitely gonna be uh, definitely gonna be enjoying this for a long time. So getting all this stuff harvested and uh, getting the plants looking great again. Um, the final thing I did wanna to touch on was pests and disease. A lot of you have shown uh, some pictures of things that are eating your basil. There are only a few things that I know of that eat basil. One of those is grasshoppers. There's not a whole lot that you can do to prevent against grasshoppers. You can use a product called Tool. It's a uh, basically like a fine fabric that they make tutus out of. Uh, tool is just this really fine mesh fabric, and um, you can use that to drape over your plants. But the you know the best thing that I can recommend uh, is to just keep your plants really healthy. Generally, uh, from all the pictures that I've seen, generally the the uh, the grasshoppers when they're you know when they're tasting things in the garden, they will they will nibble on stuff that might not normally be a food source for them, but they're just kind of testing the waters. They're seeing what they might be able to eat. And so um, in a lot of cases, you know, they'll nibble on some leaves and people will panic because they see the, you know, the, the nibble marks in their leaves, but the whole plant is, is not being decimated. So if you're really worried, if you're super worried, use something like Tool. It's very difficult. You can't use like a spray on them because there aren't any organic sprays that are gonna prevent against uh, grasshoppers. The other one that it may be is slugs. Slugs, when you're growing in damp conditions, uh, slugs, they will, um, they'll, they'll munch on leaves 
uh, you know, that again, just like grasshoppers, they might not know, they might not normally munch on. And so in damp, really wet, cold conditions, you can get some slug damage. But usually, once things warm up, um, you know, get get warm again, things kind of dry out. The slugs pretty much kind of go away, or they stick to plants that are a little more their type of food. Slugs don't really prefer to go really tall up on plants. They don't they don't do much of that. Um, and so when you have your plants that are growing off of the ground, they'll prefer things like lettuce that's kind of touching the ground. Um, if your plants are pruned up uh, from the from the ground and they're not all sitting on the ground, you're not going to have many issues with slugs. So um, just two that kind of come to my mind. I have never really had massive problems with uh, with pests on my basil, so um, I'm not an expert on telling exactly what it is, especially if you don't see the pests and you just see the damage. It's very difficult to kind of speculate what it might be, um, but those are my two best guesses. And then finally, I want to talk about powdery mildew. Very, very simple to eradicate powdery mildew, especially on basil. So basil, the thing that's nice is that it has, um, it has very smooth leaves. So it's very difficult for powdery mildew to colonize the surface of the leaves. It's very much different from, say, something really rough and, and, uh, and um, textured like, say, a zucchini leaf or a pumpkin leaf or uh, like squash leaves, things like that, or um, cucumbers, or even uh, things like tomato leaves. That texture is really what allows the, bec or the, uh, the fungi, which is the fungus from the, the powdery mildew, it allows that to colonize on really rough surface leaves. In really humid, really muggy conditions, they can colonize things like, like basil, but your best, uh, your best preventative measure is to simply spray them down with a light baking soda solution. You see, when the leaf surface is really smooth, like it is on basil, the, there's not a whole lot for them to colonize. And so even the lightest uh, acidic solution, like uh, baking soda, that, that acidic solution is going to actually create an a, a inhospitable environment for the uh, powdery mildew to colonize on, and they're simply gonna die and go away. Um, and so all I recommend doing is taking one tablespoon of baking soda to a gallon of water, shaking that up and spraying it on the plants. Seeing what that does first before you up the quantity. You can go up to three tablespoons per gallon of water, um, but I always recommend starting at one tablespoon and working up if it's ineffective. Because the worst thing you can do is go to three tablespoons and then cause some damage to the leaves. Because it can sometimes burn the, leaf, the, the surface of the leaf if it's too strong. So especially if it's really sunny out and things like that. So just uh, use that as a, as a preventative measure to knock down the powdery mildew on your basil and uh, you should be fine. It's really, really simple to eradicate. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new and I really do hope that you try growing basil. It is such a rewarding plant to grow. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And oh, one more very exciting thing. We're actually going to be starting a podcast. Um, the podcast is called The Seeds the Day Podcast. It is not yet on the air, um, but we have everything kind of set in place, and that's going to be coming probably later on in this month. So you follow uh, follow our Facebook page or um, or just the YouTube community tab. I'll be posting some stuff as we get closer to uh, to the launch of that, so you guys can listen in to uh, to another way to kind of just get your gardening fix. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new, and we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye. And in case you guys were wondering how much basil I got from my basil garden, this is how much I got right here. This is about seven to eight pounds of basil. This is a 27 gallon tote that's filled about two thirds of the way with basil. Absolutely incredible. And so this is gonna be, this is gonna be great. I cannot wait to put these on some pizzas.